Well, I'm in Jan McNeilan's garden, and Jan, you know, you always have great tips for us, and I think going into this time of the year, it's a great time to plant anything. It is, because we're going to end up with fall rain that'll do the watering for us, and because we're in an area of the garden that we neglect, mm -hmm. we forget about, we've lost numbers of shrubs <laughs> in this spot. You too? <laughs> <laughs> so, what we did this year is we bought a replacement shrub, but we kept it by the greenhouse and watered it all summer. Oh, so you so didn't that, lose it. So sure. that we wouldn't lose it, and then now I'll put it in. And so um, I've dug the hole. Mm -hmm. uh, you dig it twice as wide and as deep as the root ball. And I see a little bit of standing water, so what's going on well, here? Well, it's so dry still. I mean, I could <laughs> wait another month and plant it. Right. But um, it's, it was so dry that I just filled the hole with water. And, and you can do that when you do some marginal summer planting right. called mudding in. If you, I just filled that a few Oh, maybe a half hour ago, but if you fill a hole like that and it doesn't percolate out of there for a day or so, mm -hmm. then you may have a drainage problem you right. want to look at. But you know this area, you yeah, know it's, it's got good drainage, it's well got good drained. soil, so right. it's really okay to do that. Right, and I've got, I'm going to look at a little bit of broken oh, okay. damage here and I'm going to trim that off and okay. other than that I think we're in pretty good shape. All right. And I'll just, I've got it loosened. Okay, oh, nice root ball. And then the root ball's nice, but I'm going to scratch it up a little bit. And why do you do that? Just to get those lo uh, roots loosened so they don't go in a circle okay. um, underneath the plant when it's establishing. So they'll just spread out, they'll they're spread really happy out. in their new home. Or you could butterfly it. You could actually take a shovel and slice about halfway up on the root ball, slice it in half, and then splay it out. Mm -hmm. This one, I don't think we have to do that because there aren't that many roots. Okay. So I'm just going to hold it so that I get it. <clears throat> so that the top of the of the plant here is is at the soil level. Okay. And just fill in around. And fill in around it. I may have dug it a little deep, so you don't want it to settle too much. Uh huh. So if we have to, we'll pull it up a little bit. Okay. And you probably want to watch that that it doesn't sink down too right. much. Right. You want it to be season. at the same level it was in the pot. Mm hmm. Oh, that's going to be beautiful there. Right. It's, this is a deciduous azalea, mm -hmm. an expiry azalea. And then we'll just go around the edge and tamp that soil in. And we'll water it in. All right. Hey, Jan, you have some other projects in the greenhouse, too? I do. All um, right. We're going to water this in, and then we'll go show you what we, All right. what we have here. I need to water it in because if I don't do it now, this, like I said, is a place that we just don't. <laughs> come back to that often. Water it in a little bit now and then I'll come back and water it some more later and then we'll go see what's in the greenhouse. Okay. Jan, you know this is the time to start looking at those house plants we've had outside all summer. So yeah, what you got? This is a tropical um, hibiscus which a neighbor gave me in order to save her marriage oh, because <laughs> she said that she has a lemon tree that her husband got her and he wasn't going to take both of them in and out. <laughs> so she gave me this big hibiscus. There's only one one bloom we're going to sacrifice, and in order for me to take it in the house, you got to trim it. I need to cut it back, and and I know that a lot of folks wouldn't want to do that, but That's next next year, what's going to happen is this is all going to bush out. It's mm -hmm. actually going to have more flowers on it than it did this year. Um, I have this little one that's next to it that it's had about 30 blossoms on nice. it just sitting here in the greenhouse. Uh, this summer, so I have to kind of decide how I want to do this. Well, that's going to be really nice. So we out. really need to start looking at that and maybe looking for insects um, right. so you don't bring all that stuff inside. Right. So I'm going to prune it back and that's that. I'll take it in the house for the winter. And you know, we would be remiss not to talk about vegetable gardening, so what's been going out there? Finally, it looks like a vegetable garden. So uh, we are getting zucchini. We are starting to get ripe tomatoes. Yay. And I am sort of looking at my notebook, mm -hmm. uh, which I keep track of here in the greenhouse, of all the plants that we did plant, how they did. I take a look and what do I want to do next year that's different than sure. I did this year. Not to give up if you had a lousy garden year. It's because one of those years. It's a weird year. So uh, we do have zucchini. <laughs> <laughs> but it is important to make those notes now while it's fresh in your mind. Right. Don't give up. Start planning for next year because then that's always hopeful. Right, right. Well, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time. Okay.